Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Equestria at War in which we're playing as the Realm of Kyria and as people have been asking on my channel for a little bit at the time of this recording of course uh, we're going to play as the Realm of Kyria <coughs> we're trying to go Harmonist now I played as the Realm of Kyria before it was actually released to everyone else which was awesome thank you to the devs the devs of Equestria War are fantastic absolutely awesome hard-working people and but we're going to try to do it. I'm going to read through all the folks. I might read through everything. I might not since I've read through everything before, but that was a pre-build or, you know, before it was released. So, uh, pre-release build. In the Vermilion Realm, with the ratification of the Hyacinth Accord and the departure of the Equestrian Delegation, it's time for the Matrix Superior to bring the silence to an end in earnest and allow her realm to focus on modernization and rejoin the global community. A grand assembly of the brightest minds, both within and without Kyria, will serve as a basis upon which to begin a modernization effort. So, unfortunately for us, we're losing, we will be losing a lot of stability. Um, the highest of the court, signed 1006 between Matriarch Superior Rain Shine and Equestrian Representatives Applejack and Fluttershy, both bearers of elements of harmony. The highest of the court established formal diplomatic and economic ties between the nations of Equestrian Kyria. Equestria would aid the realm of Kyria in affairs of modernization in return for preferential treatment in matters of geopolitics, trade, and commerce. The way of fire. It encompasses the omnipresent religious beliefs of the Kyrian species, where fastidious devotion to the fire goddess Concord succeeded where conquest and diplomacy failed and united the Kyrian species under one flag. The teachings of the Way of Fire encourage friendly relations with one's neighbors and strongly discourage any thoughts or actions that could lead to the fall into the Neeric state, hoping to facilitate the construction of a functional Kyrian society as part of its beliefs. All Kyrian owe complete devotion and reverence to the Matriarch Superior, the divine leader who unites with Concord's godly divinity upon her ascension, and whose will is interpreted and executed by a hierarchy of priests and mystics scattered throughout the realm. Defiance of the Matriarch decrees is considered a blasphemy against Concord herself, and so the Matriarch of Kyria rules with absolute theocratic authority. It's useful for keeping the populace in line with the Matriarch's desires, but less useful in the facility and expression of new ideas. Oh, this is different. I like this. Daybreak over a million. Matriarch Spear Rainshaw instead of brushes aside and watches the last of the black ink dried on the flanced scroll of parchment before her. It had taken her weeks to get to this point, but for now, the first time in her 36 years of rule, she'd sign an appeal decree that would be read all throughout the realm of Kyria. With that final brush stroke, and with the copies that the scribes would make in the morning distribute to the far reaches of the country, the silence her mother's legacy would come to an end after over a century of stagnation and decay. It did not make her happy, though. If anything, Rainshine felt nervous, wondering if she was doing the right thing for her subjects, subjects she had never met before, but her thoughts were stolen away from what that when a servant entered and announced that Autumn Blaze was waiting to see her, and the mayor in question entered a moment later at Rainshine's behest. Autumn bowed before a matriarch, uh, though Rainshine keenly noted the awe and reverence of the lesser Kieran offered her at witnessing her regal body and stood up. You wish to see me, matriarch? Autumn asked. I did, Rainshine said, and her magic lifted a separate scroll off her desk, neatly wrapped in a vermilion ribbon and passed it to Autumn Blaze, who took it to her own tele uh, telekinetic grip. With the silence ending, I'm bringing together the Kirin from all across the realm to discuss how we can rebuild our nation for, and bring it into the modern age. I'm calling that first all Kirin plenum for national revival. And as the mayor was so instrumental in helping the Equestrian delegation reach for a million, I want you to be its premier. Autumn Blaze looked shocked at the set of responsibility, but she nevertheless stood, nodded, and bowed again. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm ready for that responsibility, Matriarch, but if you think so. Rainshine cut her off with a wave of her hoof and an assuring smile. You'll do well, Autumn. I know this much. So, great. We get Autumn Blaze. But we lose weekly stability. Oh, God, no. Now, I want to get to here fast. I also want to get to the three and a half year plan as fast as possible too, because like I said, stability is going to be going down extremely fast. That is not good. Welcome to the delegates. Uh, especially on as well. Those living in Vermilion learn almost immediately that the imperial decrees that created the silence have been repealed. The countless thousands of Cairn living in rural villages, who still unaware of their, um, of their fortunes, are soon to change for the better. Imperial Herald shall venture forth throughout the realm and find everlasting or every last village to share the matriarch's good news. The vestiges of the silence. This is god awful. Um, yeah. Th though the science is ending in cure, the crippling effects it has left on our nation since its institution a century ago are so widely felt. It'll take time and a concerted effort by our leaders and mystics to shake off this awful shackle of the past. Autumn Blaze, which is very good for harmony, support, improved relations, and political power gain, too. But right now we're losing political power. We better spend it. Ooh, doing this stuff probably wouldn't be very good. More propaganda. Uh, how can I spend this? The Alkiran Plenum for National Revival. The key legislative body of the Grand Gallop on the Alkiran Plenum for National Revival was convened to make sure Xperia arrange on his behest to study the challenges of modernizing Kyria in just a few short years and provide solutions to them. Made up of Kyria from all trots of life, the Plenum is a melting pot for all sorts of ideas and a great way for information to disseminate for better or for worse. Uh, I don't like that we can't spend the political power. We still have a rulership. So, political advisor cost goes way down, which is nice. Stability would be nice. At least, but I want to get here as fast as possible. So, reestablish rulership. Or I guess we'll have to do three and a half to your plan first. 
The rapid modernization of Kira will be a chaotic process that can only be sustained for so long. The Matriarch has proclaimed the Grand Gallop on route, aiming to fast track a century's worth of lost progress in three and a half years. You know, pretty easy. The Pedem will have to deftly manage the tumultuous transformation of Kirin's society and culture of Kira to emerge intact from this rough and hasty metamorphosis. A letter from the, the Premier. Most of all, Matriarch Superior. Today marks the week since you decreed that the Imperial Herald would fan out across the realm and deliver the news of all Kirin Plenum for the national revival to the Kirin of your domain. I'm pleased to report that the decrees are proceeding swimmingly. Apart from a few hiccups here and there, and your subjects are finally learning that the silence is over. I've already been receiving reports from the envoys in the field that many towns and settlements are taking to the streets with joint excitement, and I understand their feelings perfectly, you matriarch. Are blessed with a lifespan that lasts twice as long as the rest of us thanks to Concord's divine favor, so time must be to feel twice as fast. Sixty years is hardly half your strength, uh, strength and lifespan, but... The entire generation of Kieran has been born, raised, grown old, and is passing on at the same time. I've only known the silence their entire lives. And a century from now, the silence will only have been a fraction of your life, which is, has come to dominate the lives of all your subjects. Ending it now and starting a new chapter for the Kieran species fills all of us with joy and excitement at what tomorrow brings. The hardships we are all born into and live through will soon feel like a distant memory now that we're all here together to shape your de our destiny, and for that you have won the undying love and devotion of all your subjects. I don't think I could possibly overstate just how great a change this will be for all of us. Even so, I don't. I know this won't be easy, nor the future will we create for Kira will be what every Kieran desires. Some Kieran want to rapidly modernize to catch us up to the rest of the world, while others are more, far more cautious. Remember the disasters of modernization under your mother's rule. There will probably be bickering and arguing and fighting, but good things will come to those who wait. They have to be fought for, and that's what we're all going to be doing at the plenum. With the guidance, I know that we can create a bright new future for all Kieran. I'm thrilled to serve by your side. Let's do this together, and let's do it right. Your devoted servant, Premier Autumn Blaze. God dang it. The Office Transmission. Understand the impossibility of having every Kieran in the realm of venture. To Vermilion to share their ideas and complaints with the Matriarch Superior. Matriarch Ranger has decreed that the Office of Transmission be established to receive letters and appeals from her subjects, and bring them to her immediate attention so that they may be discussed during gatherings of the Plenum. We're focusing on reducing how much political power we lose, and stability. And I guess political power costs. Ooh, more harmony support. Political power can the Charter of Rights, Laws of the Realm, uh, in the Vermilion Court, Reform Bureau, Call upon the diaspora, the Grand Gallop Honor Room. Major Oxpear Rain Shine. Momentarily hesitated. As she stepped to the podium placed on the step before the Imperial Palace, her red eyes shifted downwards and scanned over the hundreds, you no know, thousands of faces staring up at her. She would remind herself that this was the first moment, most of her first time, her subject had ever seen her in person. Rarely has she ventured outside of the palace walls all her life, and even rare still have been any occasion to speak to her subjects or let them speak to her. Her ascension through her mother's funeral power had been a quiet and close, close affair within the palace walls, and only imperial proclamations to the Kieran of Vermilion would have let any know that a change in leadership had taken place 36 years ago. Now, she stood before them as a new matriarch superior, ready to lead them out of the darkness of the silence that had stifled Kieran's society for so long. My faithful and loyal subjects, Rainshine began, glancing down at the prepared speech in front of her and then back at the crowd. I know this is the first time most of you have ever seen your matriarch. I know this is the first time you ever heard my voice, but a new era for Kira cannot begin without allowing you to meet me. I'm not my mother. I'm not the mayor who created the decrees and laws of created what we call today. The silence. I'm not not a lucent charm, but I'm her daughter, and today I'll begin the atonement for my mother's mistakes. The surprise murmuring passed through the crowd, learning to let that proclamation sink in before continuing. I've set in motion a series of decrees and appointments that will bring an end to the silence, she said. Today is the beginning of a new era for Kira, but I alone cannot forge your future. It's time for all the Kira of the realm to join me in the future we create together. The Kieran people. It was join me on a grand gallop onward. I believe that I will see us modernize our industry, our technology, our agriculture, and our science. This realm has been entrusted to us by Concord as a blessing, as blessed by our wisdom and favor. We're Kieran are an ingenious people, people who are intimately familiar with the creative and destructive force of fire. We use your gift to make the most of Concord's blessing. Through hard work, grit, and fervent devotion to the fire goddess, the realm of Kira will emerge from the silence to become a world power within a decade. There's nothing that we can accomplish together, so I ask you, Kieran of the realm, will you join me in the grand gallop onward? The utter applause and ecstatic cheering was a crowd's response, seemingly inaudible, seemingly audible across the entirety of the realm. The grand gallop onward begins today, and we lost stability. So what do we have here? So if you hear about this, please go ahead. We need to complete this. All of this. Cool. So we have political power. Is it worth spending right now? Because 225 is quite a bit. Oh God. Acceptance of supremacist diplomacy. I like the political power, but still. Political power game would be nice. Welcome the delegates. Ooh, getting that extra political power would be nice. Honestly, I may go, might get Sweet Briar just because I want that weekly stability. It's not very much, but we're losing 1% a week, which is actually kind of insane. So, because there's nothing else we can do with it now. A war support would be nice, but, and I don't want to increase unsupport, unaligned by a huge amount. But you know what? I'm going to try it. We'll see what happens. Is this a bad idea? It could be. So now we're not losing as much stability um, overall. 
Road of Vermilion, yeah. This wouldn't be bad either, but... Uh, the Charter of Rights. More political power, more harmony support. We're going to need that. Welcome to Delegates. Political advisor costs. I know I could have waited for that, but... Still. I want that political power. Reestablish rulership. Throughout the silence of the century-long stringhold in the realm of Kyria, the absolute authority of the dynasty waned throughout the countryside as contact with the Vermilion ceased to exist. A fresh round of imperial decrees and a reassertion of the Matriarch's reign trans divine authority will begin to reassert her authority over the realm, though some might chafe under our resumed governance. This wouldn't be bad either. Banners. Two military factories wouldn't be bad. Emperor's dead. Goodbye, Emperor. Also, I think we're on a historical. Ah. <sighs> Oh, fire rises in Kyria. The announcement of the three-nephew plan had been chaotic, to say the least. Not that Autumn hadn't expected it. She certainly had, but she had hoped it would be a little less chaotic than it was now. Now, with the wheels of the Grand Gallop onward officially set in motion, she found herself trying her hardest to stay on top of everything happening all at once. And that, to be quite honest, was an exceptionally difficult task for a mayor who never entered politics before being hoof-picked by Rain Shine to be Imperial Premier. One way she had tried to wrap her head around everything that was swiftly transpiring in Vermilion was by inviting local leaders from across the realm to tea. Those means had been very fruitful, and Autumn felt she knew more about what was she was dealing with in the realm because of them. And not only was she getting used to understanding the Kirin from each province and city better, she was starting to see just what problems had been festering during the stagnation of the sons that needed to be addressed. Case in point. An old banner Kirin from Vernon, an elderly mayor whose grandmother, who had served, and the matriarch Nal Nautilusilent Charm's banner army who had seen much in her long life. The silence wasn't so bad for Don's mayor, said only partly to Autumn's surprise. The older Kieran generally were familiar and comfortable with the stagnation of the silence, and they were keen to move out of it. There, the priests and mystics of the rising fire found a way to adapt to the city of the decrees of the silence. They're nothing like the Kieran you brought in the Vermilion to dictate policy with wealth and pedigree, no. The rising fire understands the common Kieran, the farmers and fish, fisher Kieran, the poor and uneducated. Some here in Vermilion call the rising fire a heresy, but the Kieran of Verdun and the poor Kieran everywhere whom they appeal to, the rising fire of salvation, helping who for the very way of fire, abandon them. Remember that. Premier, as you shape the future of a realm and the majestic buildings of Vermilion, the Kieran who argue with you on the floor are not only ones who live in the future you create, and if push comes to show, they certainly aren't the most numerous. The success of the Grand Galpon will be decided by the governed, not the governing. Remember the poor, and some Kieran, el some Kieran else will. This rising fire heresy could prove to be problematic down the line. Save political power to resolve crises quickly. Except petitioners. Final letters. <clears throat> as of late, I've spent countless time, spent less time traveling the roads than I've stayed in one place and writing letters. It's a queer transition, and that one I'm not used to. But it's proven to be more effective. Since the transmission office was open to receive petitions from Kieran all across the realm, my followers and I have spent our time writing letters on behalf of the common Kieran throughout the realm, acting as representatives to petition the matriarch superior through the office. As a change, it benefits the common Kieran more than the leaders of the plenum will believe. The office of transmission is designed to serve as a direct interface for the matriarch to hear from their subjects when they cannot make the journey to Vermilion to petition or a person. But a large portion of our nation is still illiterate, meaning it's useless to them. My fellow mystics and I are all literate by our training and education, so we visit these Kirin, put the complaints and desires on paper for them, and make sure that they're received by the matriarch herself. It's been quite a great boon to the commoners, as otherwise, they lack necessary influence to make their voice asserted, especially by the leaders of the plenum. Priestess Winter Frost is insular myopic, and sees any Kirin speaking out about how the way of fires failed them as heret heretic rabble to be ignored. Nickel Kern is indifferent. He is foreign born and foreign educated, and he sees himself above the afflictions and the desires of the commoners, leaving them only as tools to be heard. Or used for his own personal gain, and Premier Autumn Blay is though well intentioned and caring is now even experienced, and simply lacks awareness and know how to address a problem. The harsh reality is the modernization of leaving us common Kieran behind, so and so some Kieran must serve as a herald and their champion. Just as I've always faithfully served Concord, so too I shall serve the poor and downtrodden of Kieran. And as they realize their voices are being heard and the complaints being addressed, the common Kieran of the realm will remember who listened to them and who fought on their behalf, and who and they will remember that it was a rising fire that saved them, not the way of fire. The rising fire, not the way of fire. This was from Journal of the Rising Sun. Daily political power, that'd be very nice. <clears throat> uh, we will eventually succeed what many thought was impossible. Matrix Spear Rain Shine's ambitious plans become a reality thanks to Premier Autumn Blaze's endless dedication to the Grand Gulp onward. Because of their efforts, the 11th century will be a truly wonderful old century for the Roman Kyria. Except petitioners. Throughout the silence, the Vermilion Council had been closed to the realm of Kir to the Kirin of the realm, and the Kirin could claim they had seen their matriarch and superior in the flesh, numbered only in the dozens. With the silence ending, matriarch superior rain shot as decided regularly scheduled seventy days of open courts where petitioners could see her make her voices heard. The mere act of seeing uh, Kira as divine ruler and allowing her to hear their problems has greatly restored the faith of her people and the attentions of the matriarch and her belief in the success of the Grand Cup onward. You get more political power and seventy five political power in the end. You can do this and then do this. Reply to letters. Well, not every Kieran can venture to Vermilion to see Matriarch Superior Rain Shine personally. Establishing, establishing the opposite transmission. Has created a way for concerned Kieran through the realm to send letters to the Matrix Court that are presented to her. And this way, even Kieran of the fringes of the realm can feel like their voices are personally heard by the Matrix and in turn Concord herself. 
I mean, in the end, you get more anyways. You know what? We're going to sacrifice it for a little bit more. Yeah, we won't lose as much right now, which is good. But still. A message from Hyacinth. To Premier Autumn Blaze, I'm sending you this urgent message requesting support for the Kieran of Hyacinth and recovering from a pirate attack. According to the locals, about three days before Imperial delegation arrived in the city to reassert Matrix Peer's authority over the coastal town, a large pirate armada appeared on the horizon and stormed the port. The pirates swiftly blockaded the port, disembarking them from their ships and stripping the town bare of any and all valuables the town's folks possessed. Even pressing some of the villagers into service aboard the ships before embarking again. Such raids are not uncommon, the villagers tell me. They've been somewhat a regular occurrence for the decades ever since a large pirate haven we established. Uh, well, it was established on the Auburn Isle, just off Hyacinth's coast. The pirates are not killer burn, I am told, they are treating the coastal villages like fruits bearing f trees to be cultivated and harvested when the time is ripe. Yet the frequent raids on these villages have stifled the growth and left them too weak to fend for themselves. Every village I visit along the coast told similar stories. It's clear that something needs to be done, but until we can rebuild a navy of our own, it seems unlikely that anything can be done. How are we supposed to reassert the matrix divine rule over the realm if we cannot protect those living on our coasts? One way or another, these pirates must be brought to heal and their armada disbanded. It's the only way to create peace and prosperity for the fishing villages and harbor towns along the coast. Until the pirate menace is dealt with, we'll struggle to truly end the silence in all of Kyria, and our effort at modernization will never be successful. Please bring this matter to the matriarch's spirit's attention at the first chance to get. Her subject depends on it. Our matriarch's little servant, a firecracker. How do we stop pirates when we don't have a navy? The Autumn, the Autumn Null Premiership. Premier Autumn Blaze is the young Kieran left in charge of the greatest undertaking in Kieran history, with consequences that will shape our history for decades to come. It's a lot of responsibility for one mayor's shoulder, but she is determined to shoulder it, and Matrix Spear Rain Shadows entrusted her almost unlimited authority to choose the path of the nation's modernization. At least even more stability, my bad. But I'll get more political power too. I'll get more political power in the end as well. So we're not losing everything completely. Chart of Rights. As we move away from the society of our past as a society of a modern age, we have the opportunity to learn from the struggles of other nations. Industrialization was often brutal on the laborers that fueled it. Protections for those workers only came after how they were forced to endure unimaginable suffering. Let's guarantee protections for our workers so they don't need to endlessly suffer as well. That'd be nice. Laws of the realm. Chart of Rights. There we go. So now we're going to do. Ooh! Celebrate the Mid Autumn Festival? Absolutely. The Mid Autumn Festival is one of the most important festivals in all the realm, making it time to celebrate a successful harvest and prepare for the dry season. Granting holidays to our hardworking Kirin throughout the realm will greatly bolster spirits and allow every Kirin to return to work following the festival refreshed and committed to creating a new and better Kiria of tomorrow. Even though we still own this one too. Bolster the Way of Fire. Centuries ago, the Way of Fire unified the Kirin people in a way that no warlord or diplomat ever had achieved before. Our faith in Concord and our divine avatar, the Matriarch Spear, allowed us to come together as a peaceful nation and reject the violent urges of the Neric State. In this frightening new time tower, our faith in the way of fire is fading, especially after the harsh stagnation of the silence. We must take every effort to reconnect the common Kirin throughout the realm with the teachings and tenets of the way of fire if we are to maintain peace in our civilian realm. Arts and Culture Campaign <coughs> The greatest way to connect with our fellow Kirin, to allow new ideas to be spread, and express our cultural identity as a unifying force is through our Arts and Culture Campaign. Fairs, exhibit tours, and all sorts of means of bringing Kieran together will be directly organized and funded by the government in Vermilion, and also stabilizing the nation and smoothing over any rough patches during the modernization. And bureaucratic bottleneck. No, that's not bad. Get more stability and harmony support. The bickering factions and cliques in the Morning Secretariat have greatly hampered the implementation of the Grand Gallop onward, according to the Premier Autumn Blaze's vision. Using her eyes in the Realm Forum Bureau, which are temporarily frustrated efforts from competing parties to derail our agenda, allow the Premier to force through important legislation that will aid in stabilizing the nation. So that's it's the case. Oh, we have Sweet Briar, of course, and Autumn Blaze. I do want uh, political power. Welcome the delegates. Standard of the new of the army. This is nice and all, but you can just kind of ignore this for now. Delegates from across the realm are arriving in Vermilion on a daily basis, bringing with them their own experiences and ideas on how to propel, propel Kira into the modern era just in a few short, just, just in a few short years. <clears throat> Many more come from the balanced borders, educated in foreign nations, and exposed to the culture. All their ideas will be useful in rewriting Kira's future and writing a new chapter for the, for the nation. What else we can do this right now? Are we still losing weekly stability? We are. You know what? We're going to do it anyways. I'll reply to the letters soon. At the end of this, we get a little more political power and stability, which we'll lose. In the end, we get 5% more. So It pleases me to, to see the progress we've made in modernizing the realm when we have the right uh, Kieran to guide the process. Our latest victory was a charter of rights which have passed through the plenum. Kira's legal system was a mess. Well, what is to be expected of a hopeless theocracy? The nation was held together by hundreds, if not thousands, of vague religious rulings and conflicting interpretations of Concord's divine will. It's made it very hard for any enterprising Kieran to maneuver into the system. What one mystic thinks is acceptable may be completely unacceptable to another, and disputes such as these, these mystics and priests immediately defer to their higher authority without a question. In most cases, that ends up being the matrix period, giving her ultimate decision-making authority over the realm, but 
Now the Charter of Rights Pass, a way of fire no longer holds such absolute authority over the land. The Charter is a single, codified document free of confusing and vague religious statutes that explicitly lay down the law, word of law. Of course, I mentioned that such a charter was not too restricting in such a legalese. There is space to maneuver, semantics to exploit, and technicalities to find, and all perfectly legal within the law for Kieran and clever enough to find them. I even managed to score Christian victories for private property rights, freeing much of the Kieran's wealth and assets from mandatory teeth to the way fire. I used his tax that would cripple investments and incentives for any business trying to operate in the realm. This has been undeniably a win for capitalism, and the future of Kiria is looking bright. But there's always room to improve. A good business career will not settle for reducing their taxes to 20%, when they could be 15% within a pushing and prodding. Despite the influence I wield over the Charter, Premier Autumn Blaze and her allies still manage to include the provisions for labor rights and civic freedoms. These are the sort of things that are good to have in a developed nation, where they can be affordable, but is not a developed nation. We are poor and agrarian, these reforms stand in the way of progress at any rate. I see them only as temporary obstacles. Autumn is hopelessly outclassed by her job, and I cannot help but feel sorry for the poor mayor. She's young and clueless on how the world works. She only earned the position because Matrix Ranch Hunt feels indebted to her for some reason. I feel expect her support to evaporate as she continues to blunder her way through the plenum, and when that happens, I have enough support to replace her as the next premier. I'll do a much better job than her, and that's something that every king can agree with, and that also affords me the opportunity to make a few changes to benefit those who have given the most for the modernization of the realm. I know that many partners and connections who would benefit greatly if those labor rights were removed from the Charter, for instance. Thank you, Pickle Kerr. With 85, and we're gonna wait. Actually, which focus do we need for her? Or him? Or Flair. Welcome the delegates. Oh, after this one. We can just do that one. Oh, we might just want to save the political power then. Or we can wait for the Reform Bureau and even have a cheaper cost. <coughs> that might be good, actually. Uh, I like more political power. No. Reform Bureau. Well, the Reform Bureau is a centralizing executive body created for the all kingdom planet for the national revival and granted a limited amount of imperial mandate by the matriarch herself. It serves as a central governing body of the rapidly changing realm, and it's here that the final drafts of Bill are hammered out before being presented to the Matriarch Superior. Of course. So are we losing anything here? No. Are we losing anything here? Ooh. Weekly change is going up. Nice. So we're, gonna, we're losing weekly submit here, so we'll actually put the power here at the end and get more strength. It's definitely better. A letter from Autumn Blaze. Dear Applejack and Fluttershy, oh, I hope this re letter reaches you too. As not like Kira hasn't had a functional postal system in a century, right? Hoops I had to go through just to send a piece of paper halfway across the world. I got a new job. Matrix Spear Range Hunt. You remember her, right? Uh, really talk, Kieran? Decided to call Kira from all across the realm, the Vermilion, to participate in the All Kieran Plenum for National Revival, and she made it me its premier. Talk about a leap in responsibility, right? I guess Matrix saw something in me when I helped you two make the last leg of the journey from Mascot to Vermilion. It's a lot to take on, but I'm not sure that I'm the best Kieran for the job, but I'll give it my best regardless. But you should see Vermilion now. When you left, it was like a sleepy teenager asking for five more minutes of sleep. But now the city's absolutely bustling. I've never seen anything like it before. There's so many kids from all over the realm pouring in every day to attend the plenum. And there's this wonderful, colorful feeling of hope and excitement just buzzing through the air. I spent a lot of time meeting all the delegates I'll be working with during the plenum. And two particular really struck out. The first is Winter Frost, one of our way of fire priestesses from Rhapsody. Was a bit of a stickler for tradition who knows way more about her fire goddess Concord than I could ever hope to learn. She's brought a whole bunch of priests and mystics in from around the realm to participate in the plenum, and though I've never studied her religion too hard, I'm sure I have a lot to talk about. That other Kieran's fellow called Fickle Kerr was living in Griffoni all his life. I don't even know what Griffoni was until last month, but he's a grandson of some business Kieran who fled the realm when the sound started, and he brought a lot of the Kieran diaspora back with him to start fixing up the homeland. They even arrived with the capital and automobiles imported from Griffonia, which pretty much no Kieran in the capital had never seen before. Same age with Grand Entrance will be an understatement. Though I think that rubbed Winter Frost and her mystics the wrong way. The two of them don't seem like they got off on the right hoof to say, but I'm confident that with town we'll be able to smooth out those issues at the plenum after all. We're all working together to a better nation, right? Hope you're doing well. Wish us the best of luck for the plenum, because we're going to need it. Your friend, Premier Autumn Blaze. Nice. So with that in mind... Oh, Winter Frost is here. No, I don't want Winter Frost. God dang it! Well, eventually we're going to switch out Winter Frost, eventually. The Reform Bureau... And the Vermilion Court call up on the Diaspora. We get more civvies, which is nice. Research speed would be good, too. Restore the Central Roads. The Three Strengths Campaign. Um, like, okay, so the last time I did this, I went straight down the center path as fast as I could. Because it's honestly probably the most important one. <clears throat> oh, we want to get here restoring the bureaucracy. The Bureau Constitution, it's not bad. We want to get down here fast. So probably the Vermilion Court would be good next. Political power. Uh, you know, political power, you never know if you need more political power in the Vermilion Court. The delegates of the plenum have begun to coalesce into different factions with their own ideas on how to modernization of Kira should look, far from the heterogeneous mixture of ideas and experiences that a matrix hopefully originally hoped for. But even still, the three parties that have formed the plenum do not represent the voices of all of her subjects. Reform, reform, reform. 
I don't know how many times I had to say that word during the first meeting of the Reform Bureau. Oh, I just did it again. But today was a very busy day. Since the Matrix of Pyra made me the premier of the plenum, I still don't know why she trusts me with that much responsibility, I was automatically made the head of the Reform Bureau. Which is a, basically a fancy way of saying I have to be responsible for getting all the influential delegates from the plenum into one place where we can discuss the specifics of how we want to enact things they could pass on the debate floor. We are essentially the central government of Securia, and we act with a limited amount of imperial mandate that Rachel and Bless us with. That's a lot of responsibility for a young mayor from NASA cop to handle, but I'll do it with my best to save the realm and not let the matriarch down. Well, unfortunately, trying to get every kid to work together is like herding cats. I've never had a pet cat before, so let alone two or three or four, so I'm a little short on experience. Fickle Kirk brought in a lot of his buddies from overseas, and though the capitalists are providing a lot of capital and ideas, we need to get this whole modernization thing moving. I feel like I have to stop from them from reshaping Kira to suit their own interests, or those of the common Kira. At least I have somewhat of an ally in the priestess Winter Frost, who is very wary about how rapid modernization will alter the social fabric of the Kieran species, but I often feel she goes a, bit, a little bit too far. Which I suggest anything that changes the way Kieran's society functions during the science, she usually pushes back hard on him. I'm afraid of, uh, of how any hint of modernization could possibly weaken the influence of the way of fire in her culture. I end up playing middle mayor between the two and finding a compromise that helps out every Kieran, but I don't know how much longer I can keep that up if Winter and Fickle don't get up on the same page. It's exhausting, oh. I wish I had Apple Jack and Fluttershy here to help me out to follow, um, show us how to follow the questioning model poverty. But I'm not going to give up, not at all. Even if it is exhausting draining, I'm going to keep going back into the bureau and doing my best to move things along for the good of all the realm, hopefully. As we keep working together, we'll be able to get every Kieran to have fair and honest debates about how we're going to modernize the country. We all have a common goal, after all. It follows on us to figure out how to get to it. I'm confident we'll find a way to make that happen. So, unfortunately, we have Winter Frost. And to replace Winter Frost, well, you can replace this advisor by clicking here and selecting a replacement. Well, we can't. We're forced to have him. And I want Fern Flare. I really do. Which means we had to get rid of Sweet Briar and replace him with uh, Fern Flare. Which is kind of uncool. Not going to lie. Because that does increase our rapidly increase unaligned, which is not what we want. So I didn't realize that. And we're losing political power now because we're flying the letters. That's a bolstering way of fire for now, too. Which helps us out with this, but it's nice, but still. As we're doing in the Vermilion Court. Stability. Uh, the Three Strengths Campaign. The modernization efforts of the planet have been long been championed by the Three Strengths Campaign, which promotes harmony, heritage, and homeland as the three most important values. However, it's becoming increasingly clear that each strength has been taken up by a different clique as a championing point. One of these cliques will naturally resonate more with the Kieran people than others. If that's the case, I'd like that. Um, we can't get to anything else right now, which really does suck. We have no command power. Industrial concern. Don't really have to have that. We could sacrifice a little more stability for more political power, but probably not. We could do this one for more daily harmony support, which actually wouldn't be bad. You know what? Let's do bureaucratic bottleneck. And all the Matrix Superior. Matrix Superior Range uh, watched the delegates assemble their seats for the day's ascension of the plenum with a note of concern. What had started as a heterogeneous mixture of Kieran and other ideas at the beginning of the plenum had differentiated itself into three homogeneous groups as time went on. With Kieran attaching themselves to cliques of like minded individuals and all sitting grouped together. Discussion and mingling between the delegates had all but ceased, but now the delegates had firmly attached themselves to their preferred leader and ideals. Premier Autumn Blaze and her liberal reformists, Priestess Winter Frost and her traditional sect, and the business Kieran, Fickle Kern, as cabal capitalists. Those three factions had turned the free flowing exchange of ideas into hard fought political bit debates, most of which were, which were only resolved when two cliques ganged up on the third to enforce their compromise over the party, or the other party. Her presence as Matrix Superior forced the delegates to take a step back and calm down when they began to get angry. Let's one transform into an in the presence of the matriarch, yet even still, the tempers readily flared. We had a powerful and respected presence nearby failed in control in the assembly when the doors opened and a large procession of priests and mystics in the vibrant red and gold robes entered the hall, followed by a score of poor farmers. They had barely begun to fill out a bank of empty seats before the Winterfrost jumped to her hooves and spat in the direction. Heretic, the priestess rage, pointing a hoof directly at the fiery mayor who led the procession in. Your twisted mockery. Of the way of fire is not welcome before the sacred prisons of our matrix spear. Leave now or I will drag you down to the palace steps and toss you out of a million myself. Uh, Winter Frost, fellow mystics joined their voices to hers, and even some of Fickle Kern's clique and Autumn Blaze's allies began to boo and hiss as the premier struggle for control. Then none of that seemed to disturb the newcomer's leader, who simply turned to face red rainshine directly and bowed low. Divine matriarch, my name is Rising Sun, and my followers have traveled a long way to meet you. She said. Her voice was shrewd and sweet, and when the rain shine looked into the mayor's eyes, she saw a cunning cleverness hiding in the fiery depths. You have called, and the Kieran of the, rest have, or the Kieran of the West have answered. The path of the rising sun is here to participate in this renewal of our great nation, so long as you will have us. Allow to stay, and they'll be trusted. 
We're gonna give Heretics a voice in Vermilion. Uh... Do we want Communist here? I'm not sure which one. I, I, I assume we cannot give Heretics a voice in Vermilion. That's gonna cause a lot of issues down the line. Uh, so that's the case. We're gonna make another save. I want to ban him, because I want Harmony support. But if we do that... Um, that would help us like mitigate how much loss we'd have here. Or it would reduce how much we lose harmonic support. Uh, so, try that one. Why me? Oh, I do not think I'm a good premier. Oh, how do I even begin? Today's assembly at the court was a complete and total disaster. In the midst of her bickering, a procession of Kirin following the religious doctrine they called the Rising Fire entered the court, led by a mayor who calls herself Rising Sun, and asked to join in on the plenum. I wanted to let him join, and as every Kirin should have a voice in determining the future of the realm, but I let myself be bowled over by Winter Frost and Fickle Current. We immediately opposed Rising Sun and her followers from joining in. Winter despises a Rising Fire, calling it the followers its, and its followers heretics, and I'm pretty sure she tossed them all into the sea if she could. Kirin is pale don't like the idea of a communist society, or communalist society, because it feels a threat to the industry and capitalism and they're trying to set up in the realm. And me, I don't know what's happened in the court. I feel like I was unsure if letting Rising Sun and her followers join the planet was the right idea. A Christian once had a problem with the ponies who had a similar mindset to Rising Sun and her sect, and it caused so much misery up there. Maybe I just don't want the same thing to happen here in the realm. But the Rising Sun and her followers are gone now. When refused to welcome them to the plenum, they were chased out by the city by supporters of Fickle and Winter, and even some of my supporters as well. Instead of talking things out with Rising Sun, we refused to listen to what she had to say, and he's forced to make her go away. You know what scares me the most? Winter and Kurt were more, hap more than happy to use force to get what they wanted. I'm sorry to think that not every debate and problem we're going to encounter at the plenum can be solved with words and compromise. Force of will and personality, and I hope only those kinds of forces, will be what drags this plenum across the finish line. I don't know if I have the mental to stand up to Kurt and the Frost when it counts, and if I did, maybe I would have made sure that Rising Sun and her delegation has a seat at the plenum to contribute ideas for the revitalization of our nation. Things are going to go badly, I feel. And so all well, ordeals turning out to be less unfulfilling and uplifting than I thought it was going to be when I agreed to the Matrix premieres at the start of it all, but. It's too late to back out of this for now, or feel sorry for myself. I have to push on and keep doing my job no matter what it takes. All of Kira depends on me. We're probably going to get hit with something that badly hard later. The modernization efforts of the planet have long been championed by the Three Strengths campaign, which promotes harmony, heritage, and homeland as the three most important values. However, it's become increasingly clear that each strength has been taken up by a different clique as their champion point. One of these cliques will be naturally resonate more with the Kieran people than the others. We've got a lot of political power, which is great. Oh, so, okay, so now we can get rid of Winter Frost, okay. There you go. Oh, we spent so much political power to do that hole. Holy crap. But, that'll help us here. That'll help us here. Ooh, why are we losing so much right now? Vestiges of the silence, reply to letters, vestiges of the silence, bureaucratic bottleneck. Oh, wait, did I just choose the wrong person? Holy crap. I just chose the wrong person. Let's see, that's why we make a save. Let's read about the Three Strings campaign first. <clears throat> My bad. And then the Council of the uh, Vedigris Rotunda. The Morning Secretary had long served as Matrix Superior's counseling body, offering advice and interpretations of the Concord's will to the Matriarch to inform a rule. Citizens' so conception. Has been entirely popular by priests and mystics from the Wayfire, whose concerns are more often spiritual than temporal, and the new Morning Secretary must be appointed to guide Kiri in the new era. Very good. And Harmony, Heritage, and Homeland. As all Kirin planet for National Revival goes on, what was originally called for reform, Harmony, Heritage, and Homeland, has become a rallying cry for the three cliques that were swiftly formed with the plenum's maturation. Premier Autumn Blaze and her supporters advocate for Harmony, a platform of liberal reformism that seeks to align the realm of Curia with the ideas and tenets of the equestrian model. Renowned priestess Winter Frost and the religious sect of the plenum believe in the Kirin heritage, seeking to remember the traditions that once made Kirin a wonderful and prosperous nation, and to remember the way of fire and the fire of God's conquered for bringing the oftentimes violent Kirin race together in a peaceful theocracy, uh, an ideal thought once impossible six centuries ago. Those who have made their homeland, the rallying crier led by Fickle Current, the grandson of the business of Kirin who fled the realm a century ago, when the science began and who has now become the leading voice for the return of the Kirin diaspora and literati. All three very different ideas on how to modernize a nation and shake off the vestiges of the silence, and in many aspects their ideas are incompatible with each other's. As the debates and deliberations drag on, one of these factions will eventually find an edge over their competitors, and one more delicate over their side. The question now becomes the following, which faction is the one truly blessed by Concord's divine wisdom? Premier Autumn Blaze's liberal reformism, when Frost's conservative traditionalism, Fickle Current's nationalist revivalism. I like this one the most, because we get political power, but, of course, 
Autumn Blaze is one out. Showdown at the Rotunda. And now we move on to the next topic, the revitalization of the Morning Secretariat, and official advisors to the Mitrux Superior Matters of State. Autumn Blaze looked around the plenum, trying to assess the thoughts and feelings of her peers as they brought the topic to the table. She had to wait long for Winterfrost to speak and frown when the priestess waved a dismissive hoof. The Morning Secretariat continued to serve its function unperturbed by the silence. The mystics have served our Matrix Superior as well, as I'm sure that she can attest, and her mother before her. I move that we dismiss this topic and focus more on important matters at Hoof. Otto quickly shook her head and launched into a retort. The mystics of the Way of Fire have sole representation to our Matrix for hundreds of years during the time of the silence. They are so focused on mediation and spirituality that they failed to clue the Matrix in on how the common Karen suffered under her mother's decrees. The silence would not have to last this long as it had the Morning Secretariat had a few voices who weren't obsessed with the Way of Fire on it. We need more diverse representation. I move that we elect a new Morning Secretariat for the members gathered here in the plenum to advise the Matrix on the matters of a rapidly changing state as we modernize. I agree, Fickle Current cut in from the crossroom. Our matriarch, blessed as she is with the Concord's wisdom, will not be uh, well served by traditionalists stuck in the past, when the realm's future is, well, the future. I support your plan, Premier, but in return I ask a favor. The business care not made a show of clearing his throat, and raising his voice to make his words clear to the rest of the plenum. Ever since the tragedy of 902, the merchant class has been banned from seeking audiences with the matriarch, let alone approach her in any official capacity as an advisor. I ask that the merchant class be allowed to serve on the Secretariat. Additionally, in 10 of the 70 seats will be reserved for business and industry representatives. Is it they, after all, who are provided the backbone for the realm's modernization? We only allow delegates from the plenum on the Secretariat. Fickle Kirch has 10 reserved seats. Nope. Also, it, we cost 350 political power to remove a Fickle Current, nationalist bourgeois, bourgeois modernizer. Uh, and replace them with Autumn Blaze. So basically, we got 10% more political power, much more daily harvest support, and proof of opinion factor. factor. But unfortunately, we have the Great Typhoon. Rain and Shine woke that morning feeling refreshed and well rested. Vermilion was draped in gray as the clouds above continued to rain on the city with occasional gusts of wind rattling the foundations of her palace, but did not bother her. She always slept better when it stormed outside, and she loved to sit in her morning room and read the teachings of Concord with a cup of ginseng and listen to the rain pitter patter on the roof. But she prepared to sequester herself away in the morning room. She turned first to a page for her morning briefing on the day's events. It's bad news, your divinity, the page said, bowing his head low. Last night's storm was the dying gasp of a terrible typhoon that struck our east coast two days ago. We spent all day yesterday assessing the damage. There was simply so much destruction that wrought along the coastline. The heavy rainfall and strong winds caused massive flooding, landslides, and widespread damage to buildings, farms, and infrastructure. We don't know how many Kieran lost their lives, but we expect to be at least 500. The coast needs aid immediately in order to mitigate some of the damage. <clears throat> Rain Chan was taken aback, even though she made considerable effort to learn more of the affairs of the realm. She was supposed to rule since ending the silence. Sometimes she used to follow she, like she was in her gilded cocoon. Isolated from the world outside, then I shall aid send the aid to the coast needs immediately, she declared. I will write an official proclamation this morning. Is there anything that's already being done? The priests and the mystics of the Way of Fire organized donations and charity efforts to bring tales and food to the hardest hit regions, your divinity. Fuku Kern has also asked members of his diaspora to donate funding towards rebuilding the region. <coughs> If there's any silver lining to be found in this catastrophe, is that their funding will involvement will help to modernize the coastline now that the land has been cleared by the storm. <clears throat> the way of fire and the diaspora rarely get along. Rain trying to observe. She had at least learned enough through the plenum to understand that much about her subjects. If they not learn to work together, I fear the efforts may hurt more than they may help. She would dismiss the page with a wave of her hoof. See to it that Fickle Current and Winter Frost receive my direct instructions to coordinate their efforts. We cannot afford to let this crisis go worse. It'll be done, your divinity. Crap. So, to do this... Uh, a terrible cyclone has decimated the eastern coast of the Rome, leaving terrible destruction and misery in its wake. If we repair their damage, we will have to coordinate efforts between our government's resources and call upon their turning Kieran diaspora for donations of funding to fuel our efforts. We cannot let our people languish in devastation if we want to earn their respect and loyalty, so there's no time to waste. We need to complete call upon the diaspora. <clears throat> Which we'll do next. From the very beginning of the silence, some of our most talented and educated Kieran fled the Rome to look after uh, for a better life elsewhere in the world for a century. Those Kieran and their descendants have flourished abroad, gaining skills, knowledge, and capital that they could have not gained here at home. We must bring them back to Kyria and ask them to contribute to the modernization of our nation. So we're actually getting political power now, and we're accepting petitioners too. We're losing stability. I chose that one just because I knew that this was happening, so yeah. Also, we do have a ship here, and we're going to need you down here. <clears throat> Excuse me. No trading until you die. Very good. Someday we'll have a navy. But today's definitely not that day. <coughs> Excuse me. Call upon the uh, emigres returning home. 
Fickle current washed from Fragrance Harbor as another ship pulled in the port. The ships have been arriving Kira's northernmost port city by the day, each one loaded with dozens of Kirin making their return to their ancestral homelands. These were the Kirin of the Diaspora. The sense of the Kirin had a good sense to flee the realm when the silence began. Many had longed for their home their whole lives to reconnect with the people and their families, but unwilling to sacrifice their livelihoods to scratch out an impoverished living in squalor that such a move would force upon them. But now the silence was ending a matriarch superior range and inviting all Kirin living abroad to return home and help modernize the nation. The Diaspora, if other excuse had been looking for to finally cease living abroad like exiles and return home as heroes. Now, the ship in front of Kern had sailed in from Griffonia. Judging by the signal flags hanging between its masts and the business Kern pushed against a crowd surging off the ship to find one particular face, he found it on the body of a green Kern wearing a white mane. <clears throat> And as soon as the two recognize each other, they step forward and brace on the docks. Current the green stallion exclaims, so good to see you, I feel like it's been years. <coughs> Only a few cypress know, but it's been years it has been. The two Kirin step back and the cypress follow Kern as the two begin to move towards an automobile parked on the cobblestone roads by the docks. I'm glad you came, Kern continues as they trotted, though I imagine giving up a position at Greenback University had been rough. Not as rough as trying to educate you back in the day, Cypress joked, but my talents would be better suited here than in Yale. The Kieran here are in desperate need for someone to educate them. We have to bring the rope standards up to snuff with the rest of the world or we'll be left behind. The two sat down in the back of the automobile, and the driver slowly pulled away from the harbor. The return of the diaspora is something the realm desperately needs, Kern agreed. The Kieran living here are all poor peasants living in the mud of the farms. The realm needs us if it's ever going to make itself great again, even if half these farmers see us as foreigners trying to end their way of life. But I imagine the matriarch will simply amply reward us for not saving her nation when all is said and done. Show everything to Kieran like us. That's a powerful debt to hold. A crisis of faith in the morning secretary. The role of the way of fire vis a vis the state. Let's run the bureaucracy. We definitely have to get there next, so. The role of the matriarch superior. The position of the matriarch superior is one of unlimited divine authority bestowed on the matriarch by Concord herself. Her powers are broad and poorly defined, and in decree she issues to be considered law as soon as it proclaimed. Such archaic methods of governance have no place in a modernized nation, so it's time to codify the powers of the matriarch superior and her government. In accord with Concord, a priestess Winterfrost did her best to hide her scowl as she watched the matriarch superior surrender, her absolute authority over the realm and with ink brushed on the paper. The entire planet had been moved outside of the steps of the Vermilion Palace, where Rain shined led her latest, latest imperial decree to the Kirin of the capital, turning its words into law with their divine voice, but those words were not hers. Instead, they were the conniving traitor's words read right through the matriarch's voice, turning blasphemy into religious creed and curtailing Concord's divine influence on the world by weakening her avatar. It made her blood boil, but she kept it all hidden under a neutral expression. A priestess of the way of fire cannot go against the decisions of her matriarchs, no matter how much they irked her. Instead, she directed her ire towards Fickle Current and his cronies, their pleased expressions sickening to her, to her stomach. Not two days had passed since Kernan and the rest of Griffonia educated Elk had proposed a charter that stripped away much of Rainshine's power under the pretense of simplifying and codifying the realm's governance. Her divine authority had been transformed into illegal power and stolen from her court by the Mooring Secretariat, which Kernan and his friends had a very strong hoof in. Though the charter recognized Rainshine's divinity, reaffirming her union with Concord at her ascension when she emerged from the flames of her mother's funeral pyre, it also removed her ability to speak directly before Concord and rule by decree, instead of forcing her to earn the Secretariat's consent before making a decision that would affect the realm. Well, Matriarch's court would remain open for petitioners, the matter of ruling would now be handled almost exclusively by the morning secretariat. Winter Frost, wasting no time for separating with her clique, when the decree was finished and del delegates were allowed to go to the separate ways, the less time she had to spend in the traitor's presence, the better. Uh, something would have to be done about them, she told herself, unless the curious she knew and loved one day ceased to be. Only fools would put shackles on a goddess and think themselves smart for it. Ooh, more political power and that, the role of the way of fire vis-a-vis -vis the state. The creation of the Vermilion Realm, the nations would enroll as a theocracy with the way of fire and Concord's teachings inextricably entwined with every facet of governance and daily life, but now a proposal is crossing the plate of floor to extricate the extricable. Inextricable. Is it possible to partially recyclize a centuries old theocracy, or is it a mere suggestion of that possibility nothing but heresy? Thank God, we can do this one now. Yay. Sweet. That's pretty bad. Hope we can just have petitioners get that. Get that out of here. Better, stronger, healthier together. The paper lanterns lit up the night in radiance, the colorful lights shining on the new rows of new and modernized buildings lighting the streets. Where the town had almost been completely destroyed by the great typhoon slamming into Kira's eastern coast, all the nations come together to help rebuild the coastline. Where there was once destruction and desolation, peace and prosperity had taken its place, and now, with the reconstruction efforts complete, the town's folk of radiance had taken upon themselves to thank those who had saved them with a feast for scores of volunteers who rebuilt their town. It was the same throughout much of the east coast, Rainshaw noted as she strode into the town, surprised guests of honor. Kieran were happy to see her, and the glee and relief in their faces led to her softly smile back at them. Recovering the, from the typhoons had been a group effort, so with Kieran, or Kieran from all trots of life working together. Soldiers, bureaucrats, returnees, mystics, peasants, and even the NAKP, cadres, and local rising fire leaders had all contributed to rebuilding the coastline. That's what Rain had wanted to see from their subjects as Kieria embarked on the Grand Gallop onward, and what she saw here today, and still confidence that her efforts were not for now. 
If the cooperation and prosperity and radiance were a barometer for the realm as a whole, then obviously the Kieran people were doing something right. That pleased Rain Shine more than any amount of respect or devotion her subjects gave her. United and together, we'll create a better world for our Poles than, one, than the one we inherited. Fantastic. Restore the bureaucracy. Following the imposition of the silence, a system of bureaucrats and administrators that allowed the nation to function as a cohesive whole that had since collapsed. <clears throat> It's time to appoint new advisors, governors, and administrators to once more take the role of the realm. Bring the local, various local administrations back under the matrix control and restart the economy. Hey, that'd be extremely good. More weakness to build again and political power. Oh my god. So that would kind of be fantastic to get to. Um, that's 30, which we didn't do yet because I ran out of political power earlier. Apply to letters. Honestly, replying to letters might be really good. You know what? We'll do that. It gives us stability. And then we'll do a bureaucratic bottleneck. Because right now, we're doing okay. We're losing slightly bit, but it's not that bad. I would still like to get rid of Winter Frost eventually, but still. Laws of the Realm. Uh, scholar Monk Traveling Syndicates. That wouldn't be bad. Monks and priests have been the preeminent backbone of Kira's education system. Traveling across the land have spread their teachings of the way of the fire with the common Kira. And treating those who enter the their order to read and write. By recruiting these traveling syndicates to educate the populace, we can make bold steps in combating illiteracy throughout the realm. A crisis of faith in the morning secretary. And lastly, I would like to propose an official separation of the functions of the Way of Fire from the functions of the state. Ida Blaze snapped out of her daydream, and Fickle Kern said in a proposal bringing her squarely back into reality. She wasn't alone in that. The rest of the Kieran assembled in the plenum audibly gasped, including Simple Kern's own clique, and none more so than Winterfrost's traditional sect. We cannot expect business and industry to be beholden to the teachings of the Way of Fire when our religious fundamentals were laid down before modernization to today's scale was scarcely dreamed of. Current continued, pushing on with a firm voice against the agitation of the plenum. Modernization relies squarely on the one thing, and that is a free-flowing river of currency from the hooves of the buyer onto the hooves of the seller. When we're talking about the modernization of the present, thousands of tons of gold will exchange hooves in a season, and all it has to be accounted for. Splitting off a portion of this gold in the teas will only hamper the rapid pace of modernization. What use does Concord have for gold, I ask you? If we're to move forward as a nation and a society, this stranglehold Concord's temples have on our economy must be loosened for the greater good. I therefore move from the teas, be abolished in sacred lands, be held by temples and monasteries, be opened up for public use and private investment in an effort to speed up the modernization of the realm. You reject tradition, Winterfrost screamed, and when Autumn felt her gut clench as the priestess brief flickered with fire and fury, you do not know what is meant to be Kirim. You're a foreigner trying to shape our nation in the image of heathens. Have you traded Concord's divine spark for a griffin's boundless greed? The temperature of the planet rose, both figuratively and literally. As the tempers began to flare, thankfully, it was Rainshire and stepped forward and put a stop to the brewing catastrophe merely by standing up. When the planet fell silent, she nailed her eyes at every kind assembled. You will calm yourselves by Concord's grace, she ordered, and her followers obeyed. Then she turned to Autumn Blaze, Premier. This is your disagreement to settle. Let us, let us settle and move on, unless we lose ourselves to anger. Concord is Kira, and Kira is Concord. We cannot separate the two. The way of fire worked centuries ago, but a secular hoof is needed to move on. Way more research speed. Ooh. Give more political power and oh my god, the yeah, supremacy force though. I like the political power. I don't want to lose any political power. I really don't. But we have to do what we have to do. Oh my god, you're hurting me. Bow into this one next. That'll be nice. Kira's coverage caged. Kira, covered caged. The Kieran sitting across from Autumn Blaze unsettled her. There was something uh, about him that wormed his way under her scales and made him itch. Maybe it was the way his eyes seemed to pick her apart whenever she spoke of the slight crookedness of her muzzle, of his muzzle, a memory from some traumatic injury long in his history. More likely it was the way he spoke and what he spoke about that made her feel feel ill at ease. Not even Matrix Rainshine sitting by her side made her feel any better. Thank you for that. Length like of history on the banner of the covered cage, Ember Wayne, Autumn said, picking her notes up and jogging the pages together. I never knew that matriarch not tisselant charm in creating an organization so low and dedicated to enforcing the policies of the silence. Coming from a small farm in Mexico, I would never have imagined that one of the matriarch's banners was dedicated to rooting out any attempts to turn back the clock and go back to what life was like before the silence. That's uh, quite a doozy. It was necessary, Emperor Wayne gruffed in, in a hoof, gruff voice. Kira's survival depended on making sure the silence was followed. We worked in the shadows to make sure that it was well, us, my family, the families of my fa banner, Kira, and comrades. We spent generations enforcing it. Well, thanks for your recognition for our hard work. We've always been loyal to the Matriarch, first and not not tilt charm, and now thank now to you, Matriarch Rain Chime. And now, Kira changing in the silence, ending, I come to you on behalf of the banner of the covered cage to ask for official recognition of who we are and what we did in the century since 903. It's time that we are no longer forced to live in secrecy, but be rewarded for our faithful work. Do this, Matriarch, and we shall serve you in however you see fit, with no more reason to hide in the shadows. Before Rain Shadow could respond, Autumn nervously cleared her throat. Yes, well, we're thankful for all your work. I know I'd want recognition too, if I had to, if I had to do what you guys did. But Matriarch, we cannot be too ace here. When Rain Shadow raised an eyebrow, made Autumn sucked in a deep breath, the banner of the covered cage. Well, from what Amber Wayne has told us, they checked out with stories we've heard from peasants and farmers about organized groups of bandits that would sack towns and tried that tried to reorganize their t own societies during the silence. I don't think Amber's going to try to deny that his group was involved in that, so we have to be careful here. Do we give 
really give official recognition to the covered cage, just how the public would feel about that, or do we just keep this under the rug for the time being? The banner of the covered cage will be recognized for the hard work. It's too soon to officially acknowledge it? No. We'll recognize them. Screw political power, right? Hey, we can see changes going up, though, so. As we reply to letters. Thank God we reply to letters. Oh, boy. Oh. Oh, God. We need political power. Celebrate the Mid-Autumn Festival. Eventually, when we get there. We're set out Kieran your trainees. More population, better construction speed, research speed. We lose stability, though. Get weekly population growth. It's pretty nice. In the Imperial Constitution. That'd be nice, but I don't want to lose daily political power or more weekly stability. That's like the one thing I'm trying to avoid. And industrial convocation eventually, though. But let's do this one first. Good. What do we do next? Ah, this one. If the realm is to leapfrog over 100 years of misprogress and modernization, that it will need Kieran educated and trained abroad to make it happen. Who currently uses literary ties to the Kieran diaspora to bring many of the Kieran species' best and brightest minds home to help modernize the nation? Hey, it's going to be even more now. Even more political power. Wow. Daily Harmony Sports going up. Message of the silence. Well, it's looking better than it did when we first started this episode. Modernization's not bad. Unrest and fragrance. Nickel Kern is slowly marching up the stairs uh, towards the burnout town hall, passing by scores of uh, Kieran quietly sitting among the ashes in protest. The glares turn towards the Imperial Guards gathered around the perimeter. It was only his third time visiting Fragrance, his family's ancestral hometown, but this time he came as an ally in the government. As soon as the news of the unrest in Kira's once largest city reached Vermilion, Kern has immediately volunteered his time to go and resolve the matters on the Matriarch's behalf. As the procession of automobiles navigated the dirt roads between Vermilion and Fragrance, he had taken the time to read up on any information uh, from Fragrance he could get his hands on, or hooves on. <clears throat> As far as reports went, Vermilion's attempts to reassert its authority over these distant urban centers have met with a resistance of fragrance, with the city's elected council refused to see power to the Vermilion envoys up the moment they were forcibly removed by the envoys' guard detail. The bad blood between fragrance and Vermilion had boiled over, and a few narrowings, transformations, and reduced the town's hall to centers. Now, the Karen protested by peacefully sitting in the courtyard of the demolished town hall, but the conviction of their beliefs had not died down in the slightest. Oh crap. After asking around, Kern shortly found himself directed to Cherry Blossom, the city's mayor and organizer behind the protest. She looked up at the papers on her table as Kern approached and frowned at him. If you hear from Vermilion, then you might as well turn around and tell the matriarch that we won't talk until our laptops are gone, she growled. Fragrance refuses to negotiate with the sons of Vermilion. What about a son of Fragrance who will turn your rags back into riches? Kern sat down from across from her and sat his hat down by his side. My grandparents lost everything when the silence ravaged our city, just like yours, but I'm back to make it right again. My friends are powerful and they are driving force behind the repeal of the silence and return of the fragrances industry. You, my word, is a delegate of the plenum and a devoted son of fragrance, that I will do everything in my power to return our city to its former glory by shipping vermilion policy from within. All I ask of you is to stand back and stand by until our moment of glory comes. Shuri Blossom scowled, but after a moment she nodded in agreement, but... If you can save fragrance, then by all means do, she said, but no, it will take a lot from vermilion to undo a hundred years of suffering. Fragrance will not be humiliated a second time. Nor will it be. You have my word. One year progress. Fireworks blasted off from into the sky, exploding the night in a vibrant, dazzling array of colors. From mere autumn blaze and matriarch's pure rain shine, watched them with, both with awe and reverence. Fireworks were not only pretty, but they were an important tool in giving homage to uh, the fire goddess Concord. Between the pops and bangs, music and singing, and the stomping of hooves could be heard throughout Vermilion. It was the first day of the new year, and one of the most important days, holidays in Kyria. And Kyria had so much to celebrate over the past year, and a reason to be optimistic going forward. Kyria has changed so much in the past year, Rainshine remarked. The planet had brought forward a seemingly impossible task and less of reforms for our nation. And not only have we tackled them with glee and vigor, the common care are thriving in the change. It feels like the entirety of the nation has rallied behind the three and a half year plan, and I feel the hearts and souls of my subjects standing with us. There's been so little turmoil and unrest in the nation that I can feel Concord's approval in everything we do. Not bad for a mayor with no political experience whatsoever, huh? Autumn Blaze Tease, taking a jab at herself, I'll be honest. I have no idea how things have gone this well, but with the cooperation cooperation in the plenum and the Reform Bureau has been absolutely outstanding. I wouldn't be we wouldn't be where we are right now if it wasn't. So let's hope it continues, Ranger, I said. Please send my thanks and congratulations to the rest of your colleagues. When you get the chance, you are doing all good work. Outstanding work, and if you keep the pace up in the next two and a half years, we should just be as fruitful as the past was the past one was. Give yourself a little credit too, Matrix. We wouldn't be here without you. And it's still surreal. To me, uh, read by Fickle Kurt, that I'm now living in my ancestral motherland. I have been born in Skyfall and spent the better part of 54 years of my life in Grafonia and Equus, but Kyria has always been tugged in my heart from afar. I grew up hearing stories from my grandfather about this country he left behind, the family he had to say goodbye to, and though these memories are tinted with rose with the passage of time, the stories he told were not happy ones. The silence destroyed the successful trading company and uprooted so many Kyrian like him. Kyrian fled across the world to find a better life than the life the Matriarch and the Way of Fire forced upon them at home. Those who did not flee were left destitute in the apocalyptic aftermath of economic suicide. Who knows how many relatives my family once had faded into obscurity and squalor because they could not uh, flee to Griffonia like my grandfather did. 
I have thought many times about reconnecting with the distant relatives who spent their entire lives living in the silence instead of abroad, but I was decided against it. What family I have lived in Grifona with me, not in Kiria, and those that lived here would only be acting for hootfouts from a successful business career who made his fortune in a more opportune place. But now that I've returned to Kiria, there's much work to be done. Foremost, and among the key tasks is bringing back the diaspora and making sure the voices will be heard in the reconstruction of our nation. Kyria is hopeless without her foals educated abroad, foals who have gone on to be successful capitalists, industrialists, scientists, inventors, entrepreneurs, and more nations that approach, appreciated their talents. For the moment, I arrived in Kyria, I have as much, spent, as much time as I can afford trying to reach out to the diaspora and bring them home, and my labors have thus far borne many fruits. Just last night, I concluded a party in fragrance where I brushed shoulders and exchanged words and promises with many of these lost sons and daughters of Kyria. In exchange for the financial support, I promised them lucrative contracts and business deals in the resurgent realm to make their time and money worth the investment. I have indebted myself under a mound of favors, but like any good business creature, I am good at finding ways to get the others to hoof the bill. Major Grangeshot and the rest of the government will make excellent patrons to exchange these favors with. After all, everything I do for the realm benefits them greatly too. See my vision, and the vision of the realm's lost foals will more triumphant over this period of reform. We are all organized, disciplined, and connected, and are funded in a way that no other kingdom in the realm is, even our matriarch. We will be curious saviors, and as such, we will make sure that we are simply rewarded when the time comes. Oh, what do we want to do next? Road of Vermilion. That's not bad. Give more political power, too. It's a new standard. I didn't want to do this one yet. Weekly stability is hurting. I don't want to lose any more weekly stability. But more political power would be super nice, though. Laws of the realm. While we have moved to enact new laws and decrees to improve the standing of the realm, there are still many harsh laws that exist from the silence. One such law makes transforming into New York State a capital offense punishable by death. Though loosely enforced throughout the silence, the debate rages on the necessity of this law as the realm modernizes at a rate never before seen. I will save political power for that one, too. Even we get more political power now, too. So, if we use it right now, we'll be okay, right? Bolster the way of fire. Um, all these increased costs of everything here. But this does give us more weekly stability in the end. We lose political power. It's not ideal. Get more daily harm support. We get more stability, though. I like stability. Because we're losing stability slightly. <clears throat> Reveal the Quescence. The Quescence was a series of decrees that went along with the silence to suppress the studies of science, religion, philosophy, and many other forms of education in the realm. As a result, our society is stagnated, and much of the populace is illiterate. If we should educate new generation of Kirin, the quiescence, quiescence must be repealed in its entirety. Let's get more part of that. Hey, we got something done, finally. Nothing's done here. We need spark done. God dang it. Well, production gets bad luck. You know what? Production gets scientific astrology. We're going to do that one anyways. Alright, that spark done. Nice. We're not completely outdated, just mostly outdated. 0.42 is still not bad. Ooh, stability. Letter of the law. The plenum now moves in on the matter of evaluation of laws passed as part of the silence's decrees, Autumn Blaze said, pulling the next proposal across her desk and skimming over the brief attached to it. Fickle current, since this is your proposal, how do you plan on getting us started? Gladly, the industrialist said, said standing up, taking, taking to the podium, to address his fellow delegates, members of the plenum. We've already gone so far in revoking and repealing many of the ill-advised decrees that constituted a hundred-year decay that brought our nation to where it stands today. He said, the faults in these decrees were easy to see and were dismissed accordingly. Likewise, the laws that filled in the space between matriarch Nautilusalent not Charm's decrees should also be removed. Some of the laws explicitly banned little things like singing, dancing, and loud talking in public, and I think even Priestess Winter Frost will agree with me that these measures are archaic and unnecessary in today's Kyria. Other laws, such as the banning of independent hierarchical organizations and capital punishment for neoric transformations, though settlement force, should likewise be removed. It must allow our society to grow with our nation, and these restrictions instead incented. Make neoric transformation a misdemeanor like public intoxication, and do away the rest, and we'll be one step closer to a functional modern society. Though most are not in agreement, Winter Frost draws robust uh, counterpoints. One may personally agree that some of these restrictions are trivial, were they not, Concord's divine and intention, passed through our previous avatar matriarch charm should begin. Removing them would be blasphemy, and it's not up to us to decide what should be done. That is matriarch Rainshine's decision, not ours. But it must outright reject your proposal to remove the capital punishment on the New York transformation's current. We need a strong deterrent to prevent the transformation into the New York State, now more than ever. Remove that, and we only feed more fuel to the fire. Tempers will flare, and another bout of New York transformations will be cal the calamity, as sees all our progress permanently undone. It's not a risk we can afford to take, so the way, only way to control it is to punish it with the harshest penalty imaginable. So, here in the plenum, do we abandon the safeguards that prevented the complete destruction of our nation a century ago, or do we remember our traditions and reasons why these safeguards were implemented in the first place? Here society must modernize with the nation. Ooh. These laws were passed for a reason, and that reason is still valid today. Yeah, it doesn't benefit as much. I will go with this one, yeah. Holy crap, now we got plenty of political power, that's fantastic. I don't want to lose any more place to put I might do weekly. I might do that, but I'm also getting rid of this person who gets spend a crap ton of political power. 
It's January. Uh, do we, get, we do get more political power eventually. We do lose more political power, but we get more research speed and cost for all that stuff. Local current we could grab. Uh, Separate note we could grab. But I do want this one. So we have Autumn Blaze, Sweet Briar, Winter Frost. We lose 5% stability right now. I do that one. 350! That's an insane amount. But now we still have weekly change. We're losing some. We get 0.61, which is not bad. Um, so. Basically, we, we'll do okay. An Imperial Constitution. It's time to draft a constitution that will lay out the powers and privileges of each branch of a new government. The authority of the Matrix Superior will be defined. The responsibilities of the Morning Secretariat laid out. However, the realm lacks a modern judicial system. It's up to the Premier to come up with a proposal for one that will best serve the interests of the realm. I'm just trying to set us up for success. That's all. Hey, scientific astrology? Fantastic. Let a hundred flowers blossom. Awesome. That was a nice change of pace, Autumn Blaze, calmly noted, to be able to gather with the leaders of the other factions and enjoy dinner and drink together with a hard day of stammering out policy and reform of the plenum. It wasn't every day that the clique leaders could put aside their differences and enjoy a meal together. Winter Frost and Fickle Current certainly weren't inviting each other over a tea, over a long day of arguing, but on the rare days when the plenum could pass its agenda nearly unanimously, or at least without heated arguments, Autumn liked to take a day or two out for dinner afterwards and relax, and help remind every Kieran that they were all Kieran and partners in this endeavor, not enemies to be defeated, of course. I don't remember which one I chose for this one. I think we had all agreed that the ending of uh, the quintessence was for the betterment of Rome, Fickle Current said as they waited for the meals to be brought out to them. <clears throat> one by one, we would roll back matriarch Nautilicent charms, decrees that established our education system, and ban the study of science, religion, philosophy outside what we already knew in Nano 3. That's a mark of progress right there. The new freedom of information is helping us unravel more of Concord's mysteries, Winter Frost agreed. Concord lives in a science and philosophy as much as she does in a religion. The way of fire is not merely a matter of theology, it's a foundation of our society and everything that we do. Exploring how Concord's divinity influences the natural world around us is just as important as understanding how we can better strive to follow our teachings. I recently read a report that came across my desk saying that the number of schools in the realm has multiplied a hundredfold in such a short time, Autumn added. More cure are gaining. The gift of education than ever before and a higher quality than ever we thought imaginable when we first started. That's cause for celebration, I think. Agreed, Kern said, as he lifted up his drink in his magic, prompting Autumn and Winter to do the same. A toast in Akira's progress. We are making a dream that once seemed possible into a better reality, to a brighter tomorrow and a brighter Kyrio. And we got, we're got almost out of debt in terms of political power. Fantastic. As we do this one, um, I would like to do this one too, but weekly change, that's just that's pretty strong, even though we don't need the population probably. We'll go to settle the attorneys. Um, so I think we're this before, so if you read this one, please, please go ahead again. We lose stability. Eventually, we're going to lose a lot of stability, so we're going to really have to focus on getting more stability overall. Uh, Riverland economy, that's not bad. Industrialized bread basket. Uh, I mean, this is all good stuff, don't get me wrong. Is it extremely important to do immediately? Honestly, no. Breakneck industrialization. Reassemble the banners. Kiri once possessed an impressive military banner, or military supported by the banner system. Each city contributed soldiers to a local banner that could be rallied and commanded at the matriarch's discretion. The soldiers would be then given land following their service, creating an entire class of proud soldier citizens. Seven rallied soldiers once more to face the threats of the modern era. But if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we continue with modernizing Kyria. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous rest of your day.